folks. Uh, okay, welcome back. So today we're going to talk a little bit about the hominins. We're talking about before humans, really, our family tree leading up to now. And as I mentioned before in class, we're not going to hit every single one of the hominins. Instead, we're going to focus on what I call the superstars. So the first one, and it can't be left out in any superstar list, is the first one. The reason we're called hominins, in the easy way of thinking about it, is because we're bipedal. We walk on two feet. And all of the people that we're going to, well, all the folks we're going to meet today and for the rest of this unit are going to be hominins, meaning they walked on two feet. This changed everything. As you learn in our 101 class, if it weren't for walking on two feet, we wouldn't be here today. So let's talk about the one who brought it to us. This is Sahelanthropus chadensis. Sahelanthropus chad... Well, actually, I'll read from this way. Sahelanthropus chadensis. Sahelanthropus chadensis is very tiny. If you can look at my fist compared to this skull, they're virtually the same size. This little guy's head is super tiny. And you can see going along with that, it's pretty mushed up which makes sense because he's literally the oldest. This one dates back to about 7 million years ago. So what we have, if you look at him closely, and I want you to do this, in fact, a little precursor to all of the hominins we're going to meet. You are going to be asked to look at them and literally recognize them as an individual. So with this one, Sahelanthropus chadensis, we're going to meet it, and I'm going to bring your attention to kind of the way we would recognize anything, if you were to look at anything. So, let's look closely at his face. First of all, it's smushed up. In fact, so much so, it's actually smushed out of line. It's not quite right. In fact, you can really see this if you look at the top aspect, his brow ridge. It's broken off on this side. This side sticks way out to the side. You can see how far, how protruding this side of his brow ridge is. The, his whole face is kind of smooshed over to one side. You can see also in the back, it's just as crunched up. There's a lot of little pieces that make up this fossil. You can think of it like a broken jar that archaeologists have put back together, piece by piece. This is the same way, although in this case it was paleoanthropologists that put it back together. So, Sahelanthropus chadensis, a couple of things you'll recognize. Number one, super tiny. That's not going to help much on the online test. So, what I want you to draw attention to is this one side protruding way out. This brow ridge. This little guy is a superstar because he was the first one to walk on two feet. Very important to remember this guy. He's our grandfather all of our great, great, great million greats back, grandfather. That's important. Dates to about seven million years ago. Pay a lot of attention to this brow ridge here and the smashed up appearance. There's one other that we'll meet that has another smashed up appearance. And for those, I'll show you them side by side. So let's move up to the next stage in our evolution. We're going to jump way forward. This is Lucy. Her actual species name is Australopithecus, because she's our first Australopith that we're going to meet. She's not the first one that ever existed. Australopithecus afarensis. Australopithecus afarensis. She gets this name because they were found in the Afar region of Ethiopia, Eastern Africa. First of all, you're going to notice Lucy, although she's tiny for her species even, is much larger. Her cranium is much larger than little Sahelanthropus. But if I bring Lucy's boyfriend over, you're going to see. He's much bigger. I mentioned Lucy is relatively small for her species, her species being Australopithecus afarensis. This is a male of the species. Now, this is honestly just a reconstruction for the most part, but it gives you an idea of how much larger the male was 
than Lucy. Lucy was probably a small female. She was an adult, she wasn't a child, but she's still relatively small. But there's something I want you to look at in their facial features. Do you guys see these radically out swept cheekbones? In fact, let me bring the male up. You can see the same thing. Whoa, try to hold this guy. But what I want you to look at is how wide from here to here, in fact, how wide the whole eye area is and how tall this part is. If you look at those, it forms kind of a T, a T shape. Now, unfortunately, as I've mentioned before, you guys are going to be doing this online, so you won't have the size differences to really point yourself with these individuals. Let me hold them up in anatomical position as best I can. So instead, I want you guys throughout all of these to use your whatever ideas that you might have about how you would describe these. I want you to write down a description of each one of these. Don't turn it in. This is for you. Write down a description of the descriptive words you see in all these. I'll give you a few of them as we go through these hominins. But Australopithecus afarensis has this kind of really wide cheekbone. They're flared out. They're actually rolled forward. If you can see very well from behind her, you can see these cheekbones actually flare kind of forward in the uh, superior position. You can see that quite clearly. You can also see it in the inferior position. But this kind of wide eyes and long teeth and snout, it actually is formed because these stick out much further than what we'll see in later species. So I want you to sort of look at that T shape that I'm describing. But like I said, you are describing individuals. If I go down to Johannesburg, or go to Kenya, any museum around, the, or Germany, any museum around the world, and say, show me your Lucy, it's going to look identical to this one. These are all casts, but they look exactly the same, every single one of them, because it's the same individual. It's like if I go to Germany and say, show me Arnold Schwarzenegger in Germany, he's going to look the same as the Arnold Schwarzenegger here, because it's the same individual. These two are different, but I want you to put them together. These are both Australopithecus afarensis. So, Sahelanthropus, about 7 million years ago. These two, about 3 million years ago. Much younger. In fact, these guys are only a little bit further away from Sahelanthropus as we are from them. Crazy, isn't it? Okay. Moving on. So, the next one that we're going to talk about is not a real species at all, if you ask me. Um, I'm going to put up the timeline over and over again throughout these uh, videos, so you can see the timeline of which species we're talking about. But, this is the so-called Kenyanthropus Platyops. She's called Platyops because her face is flat. Because it's smashed into thousands of different pieces. So what I want you to do, real quick, I'm going to hold this up. I want you to count how many pieces the face is made out of. Okay, you done yet? 18,000. You're right. Good job. 18,000 different pieces. Sorry, I was being a dick. 18,000 different pieces. Look at that. Do you think it's going to be a little squished? She's named not only a separate species from these guys, but a separate genus from these guys, all because she's smashed. How is that good science? It's not. These guys, this is Lucy, she was around, Australopithecus afarensis, around about 3.2 million years ago. 3.2 million years ago, same place, same time, same look, 
just smushed. So I mentioned I was going to bring this up before. Kenyanthropus platyops, Solanthropus chadensis. You can see they're both smashed to bits. These two are the worst fossils as far as condition goes in all of it. Two things you can tell them apart by. Number one, size. You can see she is much larger than he is because she's about three million years younger. But biggest thing is, do you see her brow ridge? This is it going right across here. It really doesn't stick out like this one does. Look at the size of that brow ridge hanging out to the side. Now, in a quiz where you only have pictures and you won't have this size comparison because you can't use your hands to hold these guys, I want you to look for that. His right hand side brow ridge is sticking way out. That's Sahelanthropus chadensis. Kenyanthropus platyops smushed into a lot of different pieces. She's kind of the coloration of, I don't know, I would call that like caramel or something like that. But also you'll notice her nose is mushed over, flattened and mushed over to the side. And no real prominent brow ridge like what we have with Solanthropus chadensis. This is Kenyanthropus, because guess where she was found? Kenya. Kenyanthropus. Platyops. What does platy sound like? Platter? Plate? Sure enough, that's where the name comes from. It means flat. Ops means face, like cyclops, a face with one eye. Platyops, a flat face. Flat face person from Kenya, Kenyanthropus, Platyops, complete bunk. If you ask me, this one is only named as a species to get money to go find other species. Okay, now we're gonna talk about Australopithecus africanus. Of this, we have two specimens that are gonna be in the test. One is obviously a what? What would you say? If this is an adult, obviously we've got a child. A couple of reasons you know this is a child. First of all, it's super tiny. Second of all, it's got teensy tiny little teeth and not enough of them. But this is called the Tong child because of where it was found. Something I want you to pay attention to though when we're looking at the Tong child because as usual, you guys aren't going to be able to pick this up and hold it in an actual way so you're looking at it online tom child comes in three pieces we've got an endocast this is a cast of its brain as it was inside the skull so if you see this brain cast it's a different color and as i mentioned the tom child if you go to east germany and say show me your tom child they're going to show you the same exact cast i'm holding it together here which is why my thumb is there Tong child. Looks like a little baby. It's like a baby monkey, really, but its teeth are too small to be a monkey. Here, and the brain is too large <laughs> to be a monkey of that size. So we know this is a child. If you see this endocast, this different colored brain piece on there, guess what? That's Tong child. Keep that in mind. I'm going to move this one out of the way because it's a bit fiddly. Three different pieces. Here is the other one, Mrs. Plez. Mrs. Plez is an Australopithecus africanus. Again, Australopith. By the way, I didn't mention this before, but Australopith means southern ape. Really means southern ape man, but we say southern ape human. Southern ape man. Austra, Australia, Austria. It means south. Southern, Austra. Australopith, Lopithocene means ape man. And where's this from? From Africanus, South Africa. This was this was one of the first ones found. It's not the earliest, but it's one of the first ones discovered in 1924 by Ray Dart. Raymond Dart thought, hey, I know it's gonna be 
the ancestor to all of us, which it is, but it's not the only one. So he thought it was the only one they'd find in Africa. He was very, 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 very wrong. All of these we find in a huge, massive continent of Africa. But this one he named Africanus because it was so early on. He didn't think he'd meet a bunch more. But here's how to recognize Mrs. Plez. That's her colloquial name. Female, obviously. Australopithecus Africanus. This is the way I do it. Do you guys see this swoop going down the side of her head? This is where the fossil is missing. They filled this in with clay and it comes down to a little point over on this side. You know what that looks like to me? Looks like a Nike swoosh. I know, I'm crazy. I'm weird in the head, but See that Nike swoosh? This is this white... Again, remember, these are individuals. If I take Australopithecus africanus, Mrs. Plez, specifically, out of a cabinet in Siberia, they're going to have the same one that we have right here at Pierce. Look for that Nike swoosh. It's going to be on every single one of them because they're the same individual. If I find that Nike swoosh, Mrs. Plez, Australopithecus africanus. Okay, so these are obviously not all the individuals we met. I've got a small desk here. But I put them in basically chronological order. What we have is Solanthropus chadensis. He's the earliest. Then we have Australopithecus afarensis, a far region of Ethiopia, right behind it. Kenyanthropus platyops. Why is it behind it? Because I'm doing my timeline this way and these are at the same time, same place. This is the same thing. But you have to name it Kenyanthropus platyops. Smushed up face, same as Australopithecus afarensis. Then, last but not least, we have Australopithecus africanus. This is Mrs. Plez. We also have the Tom child. This is Lucy. We also have her boyfriend, the big guy. That's all the Australopiths that we're going to learn.